Long nose. <laughs> Looks like a sturgeon fish. <laughs> oh, please, Chloe. <laughs> oh, so funny. That's the backup camera for the the truck. I don't think Chloe knows we're up here. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh, well, what are we doing, babe? We're gonna go up the hill, up the mountain with the family, and then we're gonna sit down and answer your questions. <laughs> of the mountain and it's just beautiful but it's it's a little windy so I hope you can hear us okay mm -hmm. <laughs> you'll probably hear the wind blow and I don't we're kind of sitting over the edge here where it's we actually wanted the mountains the good mountains as the background you'll mm -hmm. see above Priscilla's head there that we have uh, this is looking southeast and the real mountains are in the west mm -hmm. uh, but you'll see a few snow-covered mountains up there but it was probably around 60 degrees today but it's kind of windy and it's cloudy so a little chilly tonight. We'll put some footage on here for you guys of the mountain range and it's it's just beautiful up here. It is right. Yeah. Okay well we're gonna be doing a question and answer tonight Yeah. and there's a lot of questions so we're gonna try to just snap through them as fast as we can hopefully yeah. we'll answer them well for you but still uh, yeah. I try to be concise and I tend yeah. to get down rabbit trails so please forgive me if I do <laughs> uh, but we're gonna try to, to knock knock them out but just mm -hmm. thank you for watching I'm Joas yes. and I'm Priscilla and we have five children and we appreciate uh, if this is your first time watching uh, or watching us we just want to say welcome to our family welcome mm -hmm. to our channel we live in Northwest Montana in a beautiful area here uh, on in an Amish community on 20 acres uh, is mm -hmm. what we personally have. So here we go. That was almost a rabbit trail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joanne asks, Priscilla, do you make homemade quilts like your mother-in-law? No, I do not. I know how to quilt, but I just, I've never tried a whole big quilt by myself. I've helped other ladies, like we've quilted a quilt for the auction, all of us ladies, but no, I've never done one myself. My mom also quilted, but I haven't picked that up. That was good. Mm -hmm. Okay, what river are you standing next to and city? So we live in Libby, Montana, and that is the Kootenai River uh, that we're standing next to. It goes through our town. And how old are you two? Take a guess. <laughs> 22 and 26. I wish. <laughs> yeah. I am uh, 38. And I am 40. Yep. What's your routine like when it comes to family Bible study time? Well, actually, I wanted to make a note of this. Okay. There's an Amish colony down Tongue River right next to Ashland, Montana. I know where that is. I Actually, um, close to there, I have a niece living, but not in, mm -hmm. not in that particular community, but close to there. But anyways, okay. Um, whoopsie. Mm -hmm. uh, here's you go. What's your routine like when it comes to family Bible study time? We've, a lot of these questions we've answered before. So we'll try to keep it concise and maybe point you back to some of the other question and answers. We try to, if we do it, it's in the evening right. with the family. We read a chapter in the Bible or so, but we always pray together evenings and mornings before we go apart from each right. other. Right, yep. Okay. All right. Can you tell me where I can buy the kerosene lamps like the Amish? Also, what kind of fuel? Because the kerosene I have tried put off such a strong smell of kerosene I had had yeah. to blow it out yeah you know I'm not sure I just know back east there's a lot of stores like Amish stores can you think yes, of yes layman's hardware yeah. is spelled l-e-h-m-a-n-s layman's hardware they sell I know that they're online and they sell all kinds of those things mm -hmm. so just look for those those mm -hmm. kerosene lamps and we actually um, is that what we use was kerosene? Yes, I, yeah. we actually use kerosene at home, but, but there's also lamp oil. That's there's better. now, yeah, lamp oil that I would use. It's not as yeah. it's not as toxic as the mm -hmm. kerosene. Yep. Uh, do you have an email address that we could send you an email? 
Um, right now we don't, um, but uh, if you, we do have a post office box if you want to send us correspondence that way, the old fashioned way. It's uh, post office box 410, uh, Libby, Montana 59923. And we will put that down below in the description box for you. Now right. some of you are asking, you don't know how to find that description box. I think there's like, underneath the video there's like a little arrow. Right. And you hit that arrow and it opens up another space where you can see what's written there. And there's also comments there, right? So it'll, right. So in the description box it'll tell you a little bit about what, what the video is about. Mm -hmm as well as people's comments and there's some oftentimes we put links in the comment in the description box and maybe what we're talking about there's a link to different here whatever we're talking about there mm -hmm. okay hi from Australia do you think your children will want to have the same traditions and lifestyles as they did growing up going into their adulthood you know I'm thinking they will have some of it now I'm sure some of it will change just like uh, we have kept a lot of what our parents have taught us but I know we have changed somewhat mm -hmm. from what our parents taught our lifestyle is somewhat different but on a whole our belief system is still the same right yep hi from extreme southwest Missouri have you considered doing any live streams so we have not built up <laughs> our um, What's the word? I don't know. So our internet's a little bit iffy at our house. So to do that, we'd have to almost go into town or we might glitch. And so I don't know. We just haven't really been in a place where we can do that well. But I'd like to actually. So we will. Uh, we just haven't got that that far yet. Mm -hmm. And if we do, we, we'll try to, to let you know ahead of time so that you can get ready. Wyatt, did you want to give us something? Yeah. Ooh, Wyatt wants, wants to give us something. <laughs> wow, thank you, Wyatt. Some dried flowers. Wow, you know what kind this is, Wyatt? <laughs> no. This is yarrow. Thanks, Wyatt. <laughs> okay, Wyatt and all the children are playing around here while we do our video. Yeah, so if you hear any yelling and screaming, it's them. <laughs> it's five, five other people up here. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, from Shannon. Hello, I love your soft-spoken manner. Uh, how do you handle any anger that may come up in your home, especially among the children, or exasperated feelings of a tired parent? <laughs> you know, that's a good question. Yeah, it is. <laughs> because I often do not handle it right. I try my best. I think the key is just do your best. Do yes. your best. And if you fail, if you speak too sharply, if you, and then just go apologize. Right. And yeah, we do a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, we do a lot of apologizing. Yeah, and you know, we're all humans with emotions and that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. We're we're not, you know, a lot of times you get a Facebook or in this situation, a YouTube perspective of somebody. It might not always be exactly like, especially Facebook is the worst, I think. And Instagram, mm -hmm. the perfect lives, you know, nobody has those yeah. perfect lives. So no. just, it's, I think the thing that's, the key is to uh, just to simply humble ourselves and apologize if we do. Yeah, and for the children, just, um, you know, you have to hear out your children, but sometimes they have really bad attitudes and you have to uh, work with that, you know. Right. Just, we cannot allow bad attitudes in the home and either they get, you know, some time out or some jobs or some talking to, like we just have to, the key is just to, sometimes it goes bad sometimes you don't have you know you just don't do it right right your child or you and and then you just have to talk it out and forgive one another right and go on right and so I just don't have a perfect solution because there isn't a right. perfect solution the, I the key I think here is with our children is to cap is to have their heart is to capture their heart yeah. if you have their heart you're still gonna have times of frustrations or anger or talking back whatever it is you're just gonna have that mm -hmm. but if you have their heart then you can when you go to them and you talk it over then everything goes back good again yeah. it's not this there's nothing like held what's the word held in queue that's or you know you can you can get back to where you should have been and where you're supposed to be in a good place yeah it's just and you can sometimes you can know that you have their hearts right. I mean just the way they respond to you like Actually, just last night, my 
one of the twins, he's 14. I was in the bathroom just doing some things, cleaning, and he came in and just kind of stood there and I said, what do, you, what do you want, Ethan? And he said, well, I don't really know. And then he said, I just wanted to say, Mom, I love you. And oh. that just broke my heart. And, you know, so I, I know sometimes you have, you're going through some things and you have a hard time with your child and you wonder, are you doing it right? But when your child comes and does that to you, you're right. just, it's such a reward. It is. So. Wow. That was good. Mm -hmm. How about each of you describe the other using one word only? I would say loyal. <laughs> there's hardly any I mean there's so many words I could describe him but that the one that's the one word that popped immediately to my mind was he's loyal I think my wife's beautiful there's so many words I really can't describe in one word <laughs> but I yeah I love my wife a lot okay. and uh, and I think someone asked underneath there that they wish we would also say one word for each of our children oh yeah shall we do that or shall we right just... let's do that real quick okay Justin go ahead Joyful. Justice. Yeah. Both of those. Ethan. Yeah. Kind. Yes, kind is good. And I also I'm thinking like uh, loyal. Mm -hmm. Very loyal. He's a lot like you. Yeah. Avalon. Yeah. Ah. Butterfly. Sparkly. Yep. <laughs> Wyatt. Strong. Ruler. <laughs> and Chloe. Dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say joyful because yes, she really is. Yes, she is really joyful. Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. So am I doing the next one or who are you? Are you doing the next uh, one? I think you are. Where is that one? Go ahead and answer this one. Cowgirl Janie. Oh, she's not really asking a question. Oh, yeah. Okay. I love, your, I love your lovely home. Did you design it? The kitchen is very nice. Yes, we designed it. Yep. Yep. Are you guys feeling any earthquakes there? Is this a good time to plant my carrots and potatoes? So two questions. Uh, we feel earthquakes every couple of years slightly. Tremors. I've only felt, well, not even that often. I've no. only felt a couple that I've actually felt uh, ever. last year they right. actually felt one here, but we didn't feel we it. We didn't feel it for some yeah. reason, but other people felt it. Yeah. Uh, is this a good time to plant my carrots and potatoes? So I don't know where you live. If you live where we live, uh, uh, potatoes anytime we actually plant a lot of times we plant our potatoes in the fall because mm -hmm. if you know what um, uh, volunteers are those are potatoes that you that you dug your row of potatoes but then you, you accidentally left a few in the ground and those are the first ones to come up so we plant the potatoes in the fall we didn't this last year but mm -hmm. we usually do if we if we can to get to it hi Chloe do you want something um, so you can plant potatoes anytime but carrots, it's too early to plant carrots. You won't, uh, the carrots won't grow yet. She needs your hanky. Okay, hanky. <laughs> he has to make a song about daddy's hanky. Yeah, I will sometime. Use for everything. I'll keep going. Uh, Debbie says she can't see the post office box address. So again, we'll post that below. 410, P.O. Box 410, Libby, Montana, 59923. When you are planting your garden, you sometimes walk in bare feet. Do you have to be careful of snakes? So we have a few garter snakes and we've seen run, one rubber boa, but out here in Montana we don't really have any <clears throat> uh, We don't really have any poisonous snakes at all or much poisonous of anything. So yep, okay Which one? Claire. This one? I wondered whose idea it was to start a YouTube channel. Um, well, he started it before I even kind of knew about it. I mean, he just stopped, put on like hunting videos like seven years ago, maybe. Right. But we didn't keep it up. We didn't do it for a YouTube channel, right. you know. But it, just like two years ago or so, Roughly. we both kind of started feeling like it might be something we should do or right. could do. And so we just went for it. Right. <laughs> yeah. We decided, let's give it a whirl. Yeah. Then I also wonder how the people in your faith almost always have beautiful hair and skin. Is there some secret to the success? Um, you know, I don't know. It depends. I, I know of, you know, a lot of youth that have acne issues, but probably on a whole, they have better because probably is... Um, 
Well, they don't do much with their hair and they don't use makeup until they're, you know. Now, I didn't use makeup until I was in my 20s. And I didn't realize that most makeup has, you know, has a lot of chemicals in it. And um, so I actually switched all my makeup to completely natural makeup. And, but I'm guessing like the girls in our culture and stuff, they don't cut their hair much. They don't color their hair much. I do now some, but, and they just, they're, leave it a lot more natural. And I think it just grows a lot healthier because right. it's not damaged so much. Mm -hmm. I'm using some hair oils and stuff. And I know somebody else commented about doing some hair videos and stuff. And I will maybe eventually, I just don't know. I'm trying to get her to do it. Yeah. She'll... I just feel eventually. like this channel has so many different things going on already, but I think maybe I just have to, huh? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> At least do one. I bet a lot of ladies would like that. Uh, so, La Lorraine says, I love catching up with you from Northern Ireland. Do you always keep so cheerful? So we're just like everybody else. We have our down days and rough days and <laughs> yeah, everything definitely. else. Uh, but God is good and we... Uh, we get more flowers here. Some, some fake petals. Okay, thank you. Claire said, hi both of you. Can I ask, have you traveled out of America or have plans to someday? Yes. She's from England. Yeah. And I would love to see England someday. Right. Uh, we have been to Switzerland and I absolutely loved it. It was one of my favorite trips. Um, and we have been to Australia. I love that place. It Me was Mexico and Canada, of course. Mexico and Canada, and he has been to Israel. Yep. So we absolutely love traveling. It's been a little bit harder with family, right. but we hope to do it again some. Yep. Okay, so we have Leora from Israel, and uh, I apologize because we're up here on the top of the mountain and we don't have any cell phone service, so we took screenshots. And when you have a long comment. It, you have to click on it where it says read more to read the rest of it so it's cut off. So I apologize about that. We didn't yeah. realize it. <clears throat> but I believe what you're asking is, uh, she says, I admire your strong values and passing them on to your children. In your family, how do the youngsters regard your... I think the question is our values. I hope that's the question. Um, because our children are still young, they're they're not questioning a lot our values. That's just mm -hmm. what... This just what they know. Or right? our lifestyle. Right. Um, yeah. But a lot of the youth, I should say, from the community, I mean, again, you know, that it's a little bit different than, uh, it's similar to, to what, you know, when we grew up, we're not exactly like our parents were, and the youth tend to maybe, you know, go over here a little bit, but it seems like when they get married, they kind of find their way again over here, mm -hmm. um, and come back to the values that they've been taught. That's just kind of nature, I think. I mean, natural, human kind mm -hmm. does that. Um, Okay, Robert asks, were you present at the Reconciliation Conference in Zurich? How has that movement proceeded? Yes, we were both there. Yes. I was 20, I believe, and yeah, that was a long time ago. It was a life-changing experience for it, both of us. It really was. We've actually been thinking about that and talking about that recently. It's just, it was one of, it, it was just an amazing experience for I believe us. it was the last question and answer, actually. We put the link to the video called the inheritance in the description box maybe we should do that again okay we'll put the description box link for the inheritance movie it was really good we actually watched it twice recently yeah of course it's probably more meaningful to us because we were there but right. still it's really powerful I mean it was just radical life-changing mm -hmm. for us for me personally it was it was an incredible experience how has that movement proceeded so it it continues to go um, yeah the leaders from that from Switzerland that that hosted that they're dear friends, and yeah. their hearts are can, to continue. And, and to, even in Germany. Right. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Stacy, you want to answer that one? Okay. Do your children go on an Easter egg hunt, and also do they get Easter candy? Um, you know, they have already gone on an Easter egg hunt, but we don't necessarily... Um, Put it together right. with Easter. Um, I, go ahead. It's, I think it's fine to do an Easter uh, egg hunt, mm -hmm. but just so they know, it's got nothing to do with eggs. <laughs> Easter has Easter. got nothing to do with eggs. Yeah. So I, I think they're very clear on that. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I but we have around this time we mm -hmm. it was around the time of Easter we've done colored eggs and hit them and had fun eating them yeah I, we yeah we know it's a fun thing for the children uh, but we let them realize what Easter is all about you know and I know Easter some people say Easter was is a pagan holiday which it probably was because he didn't God didn't you know he he didn't die and raise from the dead right at this time maybe oh who knows yeah who knows actually but it's never wrong to celebrate you the know resurrection his resurrection and that's what we talk about and yeah we've already had a sunrise service in church just to celebrate you know what God did for us and we've also celebrated Passover with friends with Jewish friends that we just really loved yep. so mm -hmm. uh, Priscilla are you going to do another video on sewing you know I just don't know I might if I get inspired. I just, every once in a while I get inspired and I will sew. I actually don't have the greatest patterns right now. I kind of am sewing without patterns, so I don't really know. <laughs> but I probably will sometime. Early on in your marriage, did you ever have disagreements on finances? Um, maybe a little, but not very much. Very little. That's yeah. what, that has been a blessing for us. Yeah. Priscilla's been very docile about finances she, she's been very good she hasn't been strong on finances and that's probably why <laughs> because if she would we probably would have I mean because I tend to do a little bit more of the finances so I probably would have stronger opinions she just mm -hmm. had hasn't had strong opinions so it's very, she's very good to work with on finances well probably one reason is I, I really trust him in finances he does <clears throat> really well with finances and he knows what he's doing <laughs> well thank you not always have you ever had to discipline your children and what method do you use? So I know this is a controversial subject, but yes, of course, everybody, even a, the Bible talks about how even God disciplines his sons and daughters. So I think we all need discipline, even mm -hmm. uh, adults need discipline. Mm -hmm. And the problem with a lot of adults is they've grown up without discipline and so they're still, uh, you know, undisciplined adults. <laughs> so I think we all need discipline. Mm -hmm. And yes, we, we do. And uh, we, we, we spank our children. Um, in love and not spank to you know enough to get their attention and to know that they need to obey mm -hmm. and I that's where we're at you know I, some people don't agree but that's where we are that's how we grew up and we turned out okay and <laughs> um, I think there's you have to be careful with that you can totally overdo it yeah or you can underdo it we're absolutely not bruised and broken by that but it is it is the way you go about doing that and it's the um, way you go about spanking yes it is right. and we actually thankfully rarely have to do that and we tr use that as something if there is no other way to get to our child then we will use that and that usually works but um, yeah I know there is definitely strong opinions out there and so we just each to his own. And it may not be right for you, but yes. for us, it, it's what we need to do. And but there's right. many different ways that right. we use. We use timeouts. We use uh, extra jobs if they're having an attitude. We do other things before we ever go to spanking. Right. I was wondering what has changed from your childhood concerning what you believe about the Lord Jesus. There's, there's a lot of questions on here. Um, I'll just read all of them. Do you have a bishop or minister? Do you use King James Bible? Does your church believe in the rapture? Do you all believe in eternal security? Um, and then if, then there's it's longer, so it's cut off. I apologize. I can't read the last part of it. Uh, well, it wasn't a question. She was just saying it's okay. a video. Okay. So, um, how do we answer this? this is a big... We'll try to keep it short here. Yeah. Uh, what has changed from childhood? So, I think the basics are the basics, and we've tried to stick with the basics of what the Bible teaches mm -hmm. right do you have a bishop or minister so um, <clears throat> right now in our community we have uh, uh, someone a pastor yes that is uh, generally pastoring the church with the leadership team and do we use King James Bible we use our Bible whatever we want in whatever the person where in our church the, each member can use whatever Bible they they feel is right we're mm -hmm. not saying you have we don't spe specify what Bible you have to use in our church <laughs> um, does your church believe in the rapture? I Yes, we believe in the rapture because the Bible talks about mm -hmm. how we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, do you believe in eternal security? So if we're saved, we're absolutely eternal secure. Uh, once saved, always saved. 
I don't want to go in that because I don't feel that's important. The, the, the mm -hmm. question isn't, you know, which side of the fence are you on? It's we get divided over those types of things. And the, the mm -hmm. important thing is, is that we follow the Lord uh, with our whole heart. Mm -hmm. That's the important thing. How many German viewers do you have? So we can actually go in the analytics and we can check. There is quite a few from Germany, um, several hundred at least. Uh, it's not quite, a, I mean, it depends what quite a few is, but mm -hmm. there's a, a pretty good handful from Germany. Uh, mm -hmm. When do you make a German video? I really want to see a German video from you. So I think maybe she's asking, like speaking everything in German. Um, <laughs> that might only appeal to a few hundred and the rest of the 19,800 don't wouldn't get anything out of it, so I'm not sure. Maybe what we'll do is we'll do some German words uh, or something like that. Okay, so where are we? Do you ever see bears or mountain lions? Yes, um, a lot more rarely than deer. Right. But uh, we have had, well, it was probably five years ago or so, we've had a bear up at our house, up that it actually came up to our window and put its paws on our window. Right, there was paw prints and a nose print where it looked in yeah. our, our window, in our and, door actually. Yes, and our trash was scattered all over the hill. Right. And yeah, and there's been mountain lion sightings um, just close by our house. Right. So yeah. But they're very <laughs> sly, we don't see them hardly. And for very me personally, rare. I don't I don't worry about them because they're afraid of humans. Yep. I attend a church here in Indiana and we have several people who have left the Amish to attend our church. I am praying for salvation for the people in this particular Amish group because I'm hearing from a few of the former Amish that they aren't allowed to do Bible studies on their own. Do you have suggestions for things to pray over these people because these Amish groups seem cult-like? Hmm. One man in our Bible study at church comes to church and has for years, but his wife is still Amish. Hmm. So I, is the question, um, the How people that pray? come to church aren't necessarily, don't seem cult-like, it's the people, it's the Amish in the community still Probably. seem cult-like. So I can understand that. Amish come in all levels and mm -hmm. there are some that are basically mm -hmm. cult-like. And mm -hmm. I just, that's the way it is. Some are very modern, kind of like us, and some are the other extreme where they're extremely conservative. Mm -hmm. And, you know, God can change each heart. He loves everybody the same. doesn't matter if you're cult-like or if you're, uh, you know, what religion you're in. Because religion is all man-made. He came to save us and have relationship with him. Religion, religion literally means man-made. And so it doesn't matter what religion. And Amish tends to be a lot of religion, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So we cannot base our hope on Amish. But the question is, how do we help those people? So just pray that, that God would open their eyes that they would see the truth, that their, God's love would penetrate their hearts because mm -hmm. that's the only thing that'll change people's hearts is God's love and that God loves, knowing that God loves them, that he died right. for them. Mm -hmm. About how many households do you have in your church and community? This was Lydia Zook and we met Lydia Zook in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I forgot to count. I was going to count. <laughs> I don't know. 15 to 20. I think there's more than that because there's so many young families. I think there's probably 25 okay, 20, or something. Okay, 20, 20 plus. <laughs> okay, then yeah. Judith asks about other wildlife. We just talked about that. Um, occasionally we see bears. How do you handle toddler tantrum? That's a good one. I love that one. Ooh, I love that one. Can I talk about that one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, toddler <laughs> tantrum. Have you heard of the terrible twos? Everybody's heard of the terrible twos. Well, my thing is, you can have terrific twos. Right. <laughs> okay. Terrible twos are a sorry excuse. I'm sorry. Probably stepping on some toes. But but the thing of it is, all our children went through a stage where if we would have, they all came to a pivotal moment in their twos. I think it was right around two years old, uh, where if we would have let that opportunity pass, another one would have come along. But they would have continued on their terrible twos. But our particular children. And I, I think it's mostly this way. And I'm not putting this blanket on every child because every child is different. This is mm -hmm. just our experience. But in our children, um, there came a point that they wanted. So when they're a baby, I'm going on a little trail here, but when they're a baby, we give them everything they want. And then as they tra transition in, out of babyhood into childhood, they still think they can get everything that they want. And we have to 
there comes a moment in time where we have to let them know, no, they actually can't have everything they want. Now is there's a line in the sand. You can no longer cross this line. You actually have to do what dad and mom say. Mm -hmm. So each of the children, it, there came a point, I remember, I think it was Justin or Ethan, he didn't, we put his, him in his little swing to go to sleep, but he did not want to do it. And that temper tantrum lasted. It was a, it consisted of saying, no, you, you have to stay sitting in your seat. And then he yells, you know, and screams, no. And then we would give him, we would spank him. And then we'd say, no, you have to stay in there, okay? And then he would sit there. Then he would start it all over again. Get mad. He said, no, you have to stay in there. He would, we did that for like an hour or so. And eventually he gave up. And it was always, each one of our children had a pivotal moment like that. In love, you simply didn't get riled up. You didn't get exasperated. You didn't get flustered. Mm -mm. You just said calmly. And then if they didn't obey, you spanked them. A couple, uh, little, pats. couple little pats on their leg <laughs> or their bottom. You made them do the thing again. And you made them do the thing again until finally they give up. And it's like that pivotal moment. From there on, it's like it literally, it's like the mountain peak. From there on, it's literally, it's easier. Now, I know there's strong-willed children that you may have to do that more times than one. Mm -hmm. But the key is, is to keep at it in love. Mm -hmm. And I think you can have terrific twos mm -hmm. and, and amazing threes and on and on. Yeah. So I, that's just our experience. Everybody's is different. Is this they? It comes to a place where they they want to outdo mom and dad with their tantrum, and mom and dad actually have to be strong enough and able. You feel so bad for the child, but you have to be there. You have to think of it long term. Right. What are you teaching your child? Sometimes we've had to hold them when they were screaming and yelling for what they wanted, and you would just literally hold them. You wouldn't have to spank him. You just held them and said. No, you cannot have that. And we just keep them there. We just hold them. And, and they, they keep fighting and screaming. Sometimes it's for hours. And, but we just say, no, you cannot have that. And finally, they give up. And they often just go to sleep on you, you know. And I just remember those times were so hard, yet so precious. Right. So. And it, yeah, just if, if you're going through that stage is, you know, do what it takes and it's worth mm -hmm. it. And your children in some day down the road will thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, it's hard. And anyways, there we go. Enough said of that. <laughs> Priscilla, it would be really nice if you could open an Etsy store with some Amish finds. I know we'd love it uh, from Texas. Mm -hmm. So we, we would love the Etsy shop. We don't know anything about an Etsy shop. No. We're just too busy to do an Etsy shop. But actually, we would love to do an Etsy shop. <laughs> You Sometime. know, you never know down right. the road, an Etsy shop or a website of some kind. You, right. You just so don't know. look for that down the road. We're yeah. just, we just want to build up our subscribers. And if we do open something like that, that's actually worth it. And it doesn't take more time than it's just worth. Just do what we can. Right. Yeah. So right now we're just doing what we can and we hope you enjoy it. And if this channel continues to grow, then we're may hopefully continue to grow with it. Mm -hmm. What is your advice for someone that wants to start homesteading? So I think, Hannah, we just live, literally learn uh, as we go. And God, I think, put us people that want to homestead a desire to, in our hearts to make something beautiful out of very little. And mm -hmm. you just live and learn and you make lots of mistakes. You, you ask for lots of help and you just learn as you go. Yeah. Just learn all you can. Do what you know. Just start. That's the biggest key is just start. Yeah. You don't have to know a lot. You don't have to know everything. Just know. Just find out what you want to do first. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's planting a flower pot. Or maybe it's doing like a little raised bed or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then you just grow from there. Just start. If you try to do everything at once, you will never be able to do it. Right. Just start with, with the things that you have on hand. Right. There you go. Okay. Would you, uh, Susan asks, would you ever consider running a bed and breakfast out of your downstairs apartment or is it rented again? Um, we've talked about that. Um, I don't know if it would be a bed and breakfast or just an Airbnb. Uh, we've had renters for a long time, so we're kind of enjoying our time without right. renters down below us. But, you know, you never know. Right. Also, how do you ever... Do you ever allow your children to watch TV? So we don't have TV, so we never watch TV. 
unless we go on trips, sometimes in a motel. Right. But, uh, yeah, they watch movies at home, but no TV, nope. How did you find such a beautiful piece of property, and what gave you the vision to make it such a gorgeous homestead? Um, so, if that's a long story, I'd like to make a video, actually, of that sometime. But my dad, uh, my family moved here in 1992, and we bought 830 acres at that time. And out of that 830 acres, my family still owns a portion of that property. Uh, other families live on other parts of it. But out of that 830 acres, we, we uh, were able to get the 20 acres that we're on. And because I was the youngest on the family, I didn't get a pick. I was just assigned a piece of property. But God was good. He knew that's the piece that we needed. Mm -hmm. And it was a less than desirable piece. But God has blessed us into making it what it is. And we still hope to make it more beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. Others got, you know, down by the creek and by the field. And those would have been beautiful places too. Um, but we're thankful, so thankful we with have what we have. Beautiful, uh, we have a beautiful view. Right. So, yeah. Yep. So Mrs. Martin says, where does Priscilla buy her clothes? Um, you know, I, I'm always on the lookout for uh, pretty dresses, modest pretty dresses. She is. And so I often check out a lot of different sites on, you know, I just Google modest dresses and and I often find different places. Now one is called niecesdresses.com and they're a little bit more spendy but they do have sales going on every once in a while and they're really, and I really enjoy them. And um, I buy a lot of my dresses from Ross if I get there. Um, so yes, and some on Amazon Ross, Amazon, and niecesdresses.com, plus other sites that I just find online that have some modest dresses. So I'm just, I'm just one of those that I'm always on the lookout for a modest dress. So that is beautiful because I like beautiful things. So, and someday maybe I'll do a, like a dress haul, a modest dress haul, or something like that. I'm hoping I can do that someday because that would be really fun. I don't even know what a dress haul is. <laughs> I get a bunch of dresses and I try them on and I show them and I tell oh, them where to get them. <laughs> she would love that. Yep, that sounds good. It, um, okay, DM Kane says, I have wondered about the future education of your children. Are the twins still in school? What is next for them? So, uh, I, I know some of you later have other questions also about this. Um, so, the future education. So. Our twins are still in school, but this is their last year. They're in eighth grade, and they're going to graduate school this year. Uh, what is next for them? So they're going to be working in the family business. Uh, they're going to be building, you know, working at the log home business. They're going to be helping out on the homestead, doing all the things with the dogs and the gardens and, and everything. But we, uh, they're out of school now, so they're going to have to be working, um, you know, most uh, every day, you know, a good portion of the day. We don't want them to be idle. I think that's very important. They have things to do. They don't. We don't want to overwork them, but they have to stay busy uh, with things. Uh, I think that's important. So the future education is the children all have the opportunity to go further if they want. Uh, but for us, uh, we're going to leave it up to them. I think it's more important to have life skills than to have education skills. That's just me, and I know there's a huge opinion out there about it. But for for me, mm -hmm. I'd rather that my children would be prepared for life by life skills yeah. than that they would have head knowledge and know algebra inside and out. Yeah. Because I, I know the value, I, and this sounds like bragging, and maybe it is a little bit. I, I don't want mean to do that, but <laughs> our boys are 14, and they know a little about a lot of things. And mm -hmm. I think they have more life skills than a lot of other people do that may have gone to college um, because they, are, they do a lot of things. For example, in their eighth grade, uh, one day a week, one afternoon a week in their eighth grade, they went and apprenticed. They went and a, what's the word? Apprenticed. They went and apprenticed with uh, a lot of different people. Like they went to the taxidermist several times. They went to the vet several times. Mm -hmm. uh, they went and worked at Metal Ark. They worked at the farm to market store. They helped several contractors. They helped lay uh, a stone with a stonemason. So they did a lot of different things to obtain life skills. That was part of their curriculum that we wanted them to do in eighth grade. So um, I hope that answers your question. I said a lot there, but um, yes.
Somebody fell, but I think they're okay. Sheila asked, my son and daughter-in-law lived near Kalispell a few years ago and said there isn't much, sunsh much sunshine. What do you do to c combat that? Um, you know, I do not do well if there's not a lot of sunshine. And yes, here in Montana, in the winter time especially, it gets really dreary. And um, I, I really, really miss the sunshine. And usually, January, February, and March are my hardest month here. Otherwise, I love li living here. But what I do, what I have started to do is taking a lot of vitamin D and I take a liquid vitamin D <clears throat> that I just found on Amazon, but I, uh, um, that's what I do. And I've realized that helped my mood a lot was taking uh, a lot of vitamin D. Yeah. So that's kind of all I know and just keeping up with your other vitamins too. Mm -hmm. I have never heard the name Joas before. What is the origin of your name? Um, so it comes from, Lori asked that. Uh, by the way, I have a sister, Lori, but mm -hmm. she spells it L-O-R-R-I-E. Um, so Joas comes from the Old Testament, the King Joash. It's spelled with an H in English, in German, because we're German, and we, um, we grew up hearing, uh, having a German Bible, and in the German Bible, it's spelled the way I spell it. And and so it's called Yoas in German, but some of the Amish have taken that spelling and just made it English Joas. Mm -hmm. So that's where my name comes from. But this is an interesting fact. Um, we uh, a few uh, people in the Netherlands actually follow us on YouTube, and one of them commented to say they have a son by the name of Joas, and they know other uh, people in in the Netherlands with the name Joas. So it must be. Maybe like a Dutch. There's nobody in America that I've ever met outside of Amish with that mm -hmm. name, but apparently in a few other places. I, I know in Mexico there's a few Joases, but Spanish. So it must be coming from, I don't know, Spanish, Dutch as well. Yeah. So, um, do you live close by town, or how long does it take to your from your house? Um, yeah, we live about 10 miles out of town. Yep. Uh, is the school of the kids in walking distance or do they go by bike? So they, it's within walking distance. They literally just run down the hill. It's about uh, a quarter mile and or so, a third of a mile. Till what age do they go to school and what will they do when they are finished? We kind of talked about that. First mm -hmm. through eighth grade, what is your family's favorite meal? I think we all have different preferences of what we like. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know. I tell you what, some of us... Me and the boys' favorite meals is is fried corn mush, fried noodles, yep. tomato gravy, <laughs> and any kind of meat you can find. Yeah, they love their meat, and I just I just cooked up some corn mush to fry in the morning so for them. So good. He just loves it when I do that. <laughs> do you go on vacation? And if yes, where do you go? So we, we try to go to Glacier National Park and camp every year. Uh, we try to go hiking during the summertime and we will take a vacation this summer and we're hoping to go to some of the national parks. And if we do, we're gonna make lots of videos yeah. and bring you guys along with that. So you can look for that a little later this summer. Yep. What do your kids think about YouTube? Do they like being in the videos? Uh, I think they like it. I think it's, they're kind of like, whatever, it's just what we do, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yep. Okay, Wendy asks, I'd like to hear more about your faith, church family, and thoughts of the days we are living. I love your recipes too. Okay. Okay, well, how do we answer that? That's a whole video in itself. Right. So, I'll tell you what, we'll try to do this uh, link as well below. Hopefully, I'll remember this as well. Um, our church now has a brand new website. If you guys want to go check it out, see what we're about, it's called Eagle Valley Church. Dot org, EagleValleyChurch.org. You read through there. That'll tell you what we're about as a community and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Was Libby, Montana founded by Amish? Uh, so I assume you mean the community uh, and not the, not the town. So obviously the town was here in the 1800s by uh, 
first people through here were miners, so no, we didn't found that. But yes, our community, my family was the first to move here. What I'd really like most is to know more about your community. So go on the website and you'll find out. It seems you live and work among with, with more traditional Amish people. Is that an easier thing to do since the reconciliation with the Swiss church? I don't think that had anything to do with it uh, necessarily mm -hmm. um, there. It says, I literally cried watching the reconciliation video you linked. So I'll put the mm -hmm. link again. It's called the Inheritance Movie. Mm -hmm. If you haven't watched it and you, you like that type of thing, then, then watch it. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful, I gotta tell you that. They, they blessed us beyond anything we'd experienced up to that point. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. The Swiss people did. It was yes. phenomenal. Um, so the question is, we live and work with more traditional, so we're very varied in this church and some still dress more traditional. Some are not, our, we have people from town that are not part of the community come to our church, so it's this whole gamut of people. But, um, so yes, it's, it does create challenges at times, but it's not that big a deal, really. Okay, uh, Larry asks, do you allow visitors to your community? Yes, we absolutely allow visitors. <clears throat> Guys, we literally answered half of your questions. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to call it a day and a night here because it's getting later and you've listened patiently for this long. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, uh-oh. And I think our kiddos need us. <laughs> yeah, I think they, they need us. So we're going to finish this now. We'll take a couple shots of the mountains and then we're going to uh, finish these answers maybe next weekend. Yes. We'll get them out to you. Yep. So if your question didn't get answered, hang tight. Look yep. for an upcoming video. Uh, if it would just be like a terribly long video, and we you'd be might be bored out of your mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, hopefully, this was fun yeah. to you. We, I mean, we want to make it quick, but we also want to answer you correctly, so right. it takes a while. Right. So. <laughs> Thanks for watching our videos. Yes. We appreciate that so much. Thanks for sharing. If you haven't subscribed, just click the little thumbs up or the subscribe button there. Yeah. And then. Remember to click the little bell. There's a little bell there. What that does, it gives you a notification. Whenever we put out a new video, it'll go ding or alert you that we put out a new video. So then you guys know you don't have to guess or always be on the lookout for videos. So just remember to subscribe because my analytics tell me that only about 30% of you that are watching this video right now are subscribed. 70% of you are not subscribed right now. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button, please, for us today. We appreciate and that. And the like. That yes. helps us a lot. Hit the like button. <laughs> but subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, <laughs> thanks for watching. We love you guys. You got, buddy? I have a club. You got a club? Let me see the club. Well, that's a cool little club you got there. Nice. Hi, Chloe and Avalon. Hi. Are you having fun? Uh -huh. Okay, it's time to go home, I think. Check it out. We came home from the mountain. And look what we have found up here. Just look at that. Just look at that. Two little babies. Wow, how cool is that? How cool is that? She just had them too. Her afterbirth's still hanging there. Wow, look at her big bag. She's got a big bag. She's kind of lame for some reason. I don't know why. It almost looks like she's going to have another one the way she's acting. 
Let's get some straw and we'll put some straw in there for him. That's really nice and clean. Look at that, isn't that precious? That's pretty awesome.